Good day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. Here we're going to talk about film thickness, which is a really fundamental concept in lubrication and tribology. So going back to the fundamentals of the Strybeck curve, we talk about the coefficient of friction versus this Zn on P, which combines uh, speed, load, and viscosity. And we know that there are three components. We have the area where there is boundary lubrication, we have an area where there's mixed lubrication, and of course, hydrodynamic. These three areas again, boundary, mixed, and hydrodynamic. So when we're talking about hydrodynamic lubrication, we're talking about two loaded surfaces being supported by a film of lubricant. In this instance, the film thickness is simply this distance which is, if you like, taking two mean datums of the surface and what's the distance between those. We talk about a mean datum because no surface is perfectly smooth. There are going to be asperities that are the result of machining, and so we take an average of the surface. So that's the film thickness. All right, so how kind of much film thickness can we expect in different applications? Well, it varies. So the numbers I'm putting up here vary between 0.1 and 450 microns. But most of the time when we talk about film thickness, we really mean in terms of, um, you know, bearings and gears, which means that in general, we're talking about the 0.1 to 5 micron range. It's a little different for a journal or a hydrostatic bearing. Um, you get slightly larger film thicknesses there. But for the most part, we're talking about 0.1 to 5 micron. To put that in perspective, how big is 0.1 to 5 microns? Well, a human hair is about 75 microns thick. Obviously, it depends on how thick your hair is. Uh, a white blood cell is about 25 micron, roughly. And the ICP detection limit is 8 micron. So uh, for anyone who's familiar with used oil analysis, you'll know that... Uh, ICP is inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy, and that's the battery of tests that give you all your um, additives, wear metals, um, and contaminants. So you'll see those on a used oil analysis report. So there we're testing up to 8 micron. And 8 micron is not visible to the human eye. All right, so going back to that idea of film thickness, 0.1 to 5 microns. Now what does that mean for most of us in a practical sense? Well, it means that if we have contaminants that are in this order of magnitude, they can become a real problem because contaminants of those sizes can cause three-body erosion. So we can start to um, erode the surfaces and that obviously is the catalyst for wear, and eventually, um, you know, we get micro-pitting of the surfaces. Um, eventually, that's at some stage going to lead to failure. But this is the, the, the first beginnings of it. We can actually calculate a theoretical film th thickness. Um, so, as an uh, example, we have this uh, formula here, where H is the, if you like, uh, minimum film thickness, and then we have G, U, and W. These are all non-dimensionalized constants. And the fact of the matter is that for most of us on the application side, we don't actually need to know this equation. This is very much for the PhD boffins who really want to calculate this to the nth degree. What we really need to know is simply 0.1 to 5 microns is the range that we need to be looking at. But you've got to remember that there is an effect of surface roughness. Because if I increase the surface roughness, for example, by doing this, the film thickness stays the same, right? So if I have a, the same viscosity lubricant running at the same speed and the same load, that film thickness will remain the same because the mean datums have not changed. However, the peaks and troughs between those datums have changed. And what that's gonna mean is that my equipment will tolerate much less contamination or contamination of even finer and finer particles. So we can resist this in two ways. We can 
if we have uh, an application with a higher degree of surface roughness, then we either need to increase the viscosity of the lubricant that we are using, or we need to filter down to a lower level. Uh, this kind of thing is actually taken care of in EHL calculators. So if you've ever come across a um, uh, maybe an SKF bearing calculator, for example, that will tell you the viscosity of the lubricant you need, it will actually ask for how the bearing or the gear was machined. And this is how we take into account surface roughness. All right, that's been a really quick primer on film thickness. I hope that was really helpful for you. This has been Lubrication Explained.